Tensions are rising in Afghanistan after a video surfaced online Wednesday that appears to show U.S. Marines desecrating corpses in the battlefield. The video has not yet been verified, but both the Afghan and U.S. governments have condemned the action. Human rights groups and veterans say the latest incident demonstrates that the military must address not just the soldiers' actions, but also the conditions that foster such behavior. FSRN's Alice Olstein has more. The video, which is just under a minute long, shows uniformed U.S. servicemen apparently urinating on three corpses while laughing and making jokes. The dead bodies are in civilian clothing and no weapons are visible, just an overturned wheelbarrow. Afghan President Hamid Karzai called the video disturbing and inhuman and urged the U.S. to severely punish the soldiers who participated. Lieutenant Adrian Bradshaw released a statement on behalf of the International Security Assistance Forces, the coalition led by NATO that's been fighting in Afghanistan since 2001. Any acts which treat the dead, enemy or friendly, with disrespect are utterly unacceptable and do not represent the standards we expect of coalition forces. Such behavior betrays the core values of every service member here. This incident comes in the wake of a number of human rights violations committed by U.S. forces in Afghanistan, including the so-called Kill Team, a brigade of U.S. soldiers that murdered civilians and kept their body parts as trophies, as well as the torture and humiliation of prisoners at Abu Ghraib in Iraq and the Guantanamo Bay Prison Facility. But Commander Bill Speaks with the Department of Defense says the behavior in this newest video is not part of a trend. Uh, And certainly not in keeping with uh, the values of either the Marine Corps or or Department of Defense more broadly. Um, And we're eager to investigate this fully. Speaks says both the investigation and potential punishment of the soldiers would take place within the military justice system. But Corey Sayer of the Council on American-Islamic Relations has concerns about this process following past investigations. So Abu Ghraib is you know, the classic example. It felt like that was not uh, taken care of to the levels that it could have been. But it's important now the Pentagon does a swift investigation that people can see uh, the results of. And after due process, if the men are found to be in violation of the Universal Code of Military Justice, they're held accountable. Sayer says that desecrating a corpse is especially criminal in the Islamic faith, and the act is likely to exacerbate violence and resentment in a fragile region. U.S. soldiers going to Afghanistan do receive some cultural competency training, including a specific unit on understanding Islam. Veteran Nicholas O'Neill served in Afghanistan for about a year with the National Guard. We were taught about the, the five pillars of Islam, cultural things like to use your right hand instead of your left, or not to show the bottom of your feet. Um, not to, you know, look at women, um, to address men first, um, just basic kind of cultural things like that, emphasizing that we ought to uh, treat the Afghan people uh, with respect. But O'Neill, a member of Veterans for Peace, says this training isn't enough to overcome the dehumanizing effects of living in a war zone. War is a fertile breeding ground for atrocity. Um, It's one that attracts and rewards the cruelest elements of our society and also brutalizes and corrupts the best among us. You know, I mean, anyone who's in a situation where they're fighting for their life day in, day out, that that can wear on the soul. And, and, you know, after enough of that, they they might seek retribution. They might seek um, what they see as justice um, for being in that position when they believe they're just there to help. The incident comes as the U.S. and Afghan governments prepare to resume direct negotiations with the Taliban at a recently opened office in Qatar. The U.S. has demanded that the Taliban publicly renounce terrorism, and the Taliban has demanded the release of five of their officials from Guantanamo Bay. This demand is complicated by a recent budget provision passed by Congress that bans the transfer of any Guantanamo detainees, even those who have been approved for release. If President Karzai gives the go-ahead, the talks could begin in the coming weeks. Alice Olstein, FSRN, Washington.